So I've had my Nintendo Switch from launch. It's been lovingly looked after, but it's been played a lot. As I think most people's have now, I've started getting Joy-Con drift on the controllers. It's a bit of a shame, but luckily Nintendo have acknowledged this is a design flaw with the Joy-Cons and they're fixing them indefinitely out of warranty. Good news. So I'm just back in the UK to visit my parents, sent my Joy-Cons off, and I got a nice email back from Nintendo with a repair quote, which obviously I'm expecting to be free. It says, right Joy-Con, thumbstick knackered, will repair in warranty, we're all good. Left Joy-Con, thumbstick knackered, will repair in warranty for free. Good news again. But there's also an additional £30 charge for general wear and tear on the left controller. So there you can see, in amongst the, uh, the free thumbsticks repair, worn housing out of warranty, handling costs £2.50, labour costs £19.83, and spare part cost itemised is £2.46. Plus 20% VAT coming to a total of £29.75. So I called up Nintendo and I said, thanks, but no thanks on the repair for the housing. I'm quite happy just having the thumbsticks repaired, if that's all good. To which I was told I can't get the free in warranty repair done until I pay for the out of warranty repair job. So I asked them, I was like, well, what exactly is the problem? Because they were fine when I sent them in. They said that they could send me a photo of what the damage to the Joy-Cons were. And you can see it here. Or can you see it here? Maybe if I zoom in a little bit more. No, still can't see it because I barely can, if you know how small Joy-Cons are, there's a tiny, tiny scratch by the screw hole. And Nintendo are saying they're not gonna repair the faulty thumbsticks on the Joy-Con design floor until I pay them 30 pound for a new shell to fix a tiny little scratch on the case, which is madness, isn't it? So anyway, my bottom lip came out and I told them no, no repair, no deal, send them back to me. Jumped straight on Amazon and had a look at how much it had cost to do the repair myself. So you can see there a pack of uh, replacement thumbsticks, which should have been done in warranty. £6.96 for two replacement thumbsticks. And then that got me thinking that if I'm gonna take them apart to replace the thumbsticks, maybe I should try and do the D-pad mod to it. So I had a look at how much it cost for a set of replacement shells as well, which would also fix this all important scratch. £17.59. And then that's going to give me a D-pad, which I wanted on the left thumbstick, new housing for them, and it'll look like a funky NES as well. Bringing the grand total to £24.55, and that's like a fiver cheaper than Nintendo wanted for the repair as well. So there we go, the replacement thumbsticks and the replacement cases, uh, which all came a day sooner than uh, Nintendo even delivered my Joy-Cons back to me. Obviously, I've got to do the work here. I believe it's a fiddly job. Maybe I'll break them and I'll have paid £25 and lost my Joy-Cons. Luckily, I've got a spare pair already and I'll hold my hands up and admit it if I messed up here. But yeah, gonna try and do the repair now. I'm not gonna show you exactly how to do the repair. I'll post some links to videos online that I follow because I'll probably tell you how to break your Joy-Cons. But yeah, I'm annoyed by Nintendo with this. I mean, if you don't wanna repair the faulty thumbsticks, change how you're making them. They're still selling these same faulty ones. So if I buy another pair, use them for long enough, I'm gonna have the same problem again. And instead of actually changing the design to fix the problem, they've decided to indefinitely repair them in warranty. And now they're trying to charge you 30 quid worth of work to fix little tiny scratches on your controllers in order to do their in warranty repair. It's bang out of order. And I'm gonna put Nintendo to rights by doing the mod myself. So let's see how it goes. Get ready. There we go, job done. Worked, everything works. It was a fiddly job, not gonna lie. Um, it said on the instructions that it recommends a high level of technical ability. 
Boyer doesn't have what I would consider to be a high level of technical ability. I've put RAM into new machines, I've swapped the hard drive out in a computer, I think once I swapped a Blu-ray drive out of a PS3 and brought that back to life again, well that's about it, I'm no expert. I followed the video very carefully, I would say it took me maybe like about three hours in total. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody that's like absolutely no knowledge of taking electronics apart, but if you've done stuff in the past, I think most people are going to be able to fumble their way through it. But I would say definitely watch the video first, follow it through and see if it's something that you think you're going to be comfortable with. They're an absolute must. The kit for the um, Joy-Con shells does come with all the screwdrivers and all the replacement screws, but there's a couple of tiny, tiny little ribbon cables in there. Uh, luckily I got uh, these tiny little um, precision tweezers a while back and I don't think it will be possible to do it without these to be honest, so that's something to keep in mind if you're thinking about doing it. The replacement thumbsticks feel great, um, obviously they're not first party but we all know how reliable the first party uh, Nintendo thumbsticks are because they all wear out over time don't they? When I put them in they were a little bit jittery to be honest, like when I went to the calibration screen they were flicking around a little bit and I thought oh here we go, have I made things worse by putting them in? But it did say on the instructions after you've fitted them to go through the calibration process, so I did that, work absolutely fine now, rock solid, played a couple of rounds of Mario Golf after it, all good. The D-pad's probably the coolest thing about it, to be honest. It's way better than the Pro Controller one. I was a little bit dubious of, you know, whether it's not supposed to be there, is it? So whether modifying it to be able to put it in properly. But it's like one of those really clicky D-pads. So it's actually way better than the Pro Controller D-pad. So if for nothing else, I would recommend doing the mod just to get your D-pad on it. That is, that's my most impressive part about it. It looks great. I'm super happy with how it looks. As you can see, it's supposed to be styled on the original. NES controller. Uh, the plastic feels great. It's like it's that soft touch plastic on the um, controllers. I used the ones from a company called Extreme Rate, uh, and they seem to be get good reviews and really happy with it. The actual plastic on the buttons feels a little bit cheaper than the ones that comes with it, but it's not really noticeable and it's not going to cause you any problems. Another cool thing that I read about online is you can Bluetooth pair your Joy-Cons to your PC and there's a third party app, again I'll put the link in the description, where you can actually change the colour of your Joy-Cons when you dock them. You know when you slide them on the side of your Switch and it comes up with a little picture of the Joy-Cons? Like I've got, um, these are my two spare ones that I was talking about, so obviously even if I change the shells on these ones, this one's going to be blue and this one's going to be red regardless of what colour I change the shell because the Nintendo doesn't know. You can actually change the colour of it. So these were just the standard grey ones before, but now when I dock them on the machine, you can see they're um, black Joy-Cons with red buttons, which is pretty cool. I was happy with that. I like little details because my OCD wouldn't have liked the fact that it still shows the original shell colour. So I guess there's not much else to say than thanks Nintendo, because I almost paid you 30 quid to replace the thumbsticks for free and to repair a tiny, tiny little scratch on the case, which I'll try and take a better picture of. You won't believe how ridiculously small it is and irrelevant it is, but whatever. The fact that you wouldn't do it for free means that now I've saved myself £5 and I've got a funky looking switch, a better D-pad and two replacement thumbsticks anyway, so, so who's lost out there? Again, if you've got Joy-Con drift, it probably is worth sending them back to Nintendo first because they might do it for free. Maybe I just got one idiot having a bad day or something and he decided to try and fleece me. Let me know in the comments if you've sent Joy-Cons back to Nintendo and uh, what your repair process has been like. The only other person that I know that's done it, my little nephew sent them back and they fixed his no problem, but his actual machine was still under warranty as well, so. Like I said before, all the links for all the things that I've bought are in the description of the video, um, as well as all the tutorials that I followed with it. I actually didn't use a separate tutorial for replacing the thumbsticks because it was just two screws and a ribbon cable and I just saw it in there and it's like once I had it open I just swapped them out, that's pretty self-explanatory. But watch the videos first, see if you feel comfortable with it. None of the links to buy anything are affiliated or anything like that, so yeah, if you can find them cheaper elsewhere, please feel free to get them wherever you want. Hope you found this video helpful, if you do find yourself trying to be screwed by Nintendo like I did, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel, uh, normally do game reviews and stuff here, but uh, there's a few occasional different random videos like this, and I'll catch you next time. Until then, it's Kutsky signing out, keeping the games alive. Hey, like